we have a quorum, so I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 5.34. Excellent. <laughs> it's the recording started. Oh. <laughs> um, does anybody have any adjustments to the agenda? Um, I had one, and that was to add... Um, Changing our uh, our regular meeting time from five thirty to six o'clock. That would be easier. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we can um, do, I guess seven three or ten two actually, both right? Seven three discuss and ten two vote. Possible right. action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, is there any other um, adjustments to the agenda? Okay, uh, no other adjustments. Uh, we'll look for a, we're looking at approving the minutes of Thursday, September 7th, our last regular board meeting. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 So moved. Oh, yeah, beautiful. See, we don't need printed out. It's there. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is Did our you agenda. get an eye from Patrick? Patrick? He's, he's, he's muted. He's muted. Hey. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm having some issues with my volume. Okay, well, we were just taking a vote to approve the minutes that have been uh, moved by Robert and seconded mm -hmm. by... Um, Bill, just to approve the minutes from last meeting, a regular meeting on September 7th. Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> so moved then. <laughs> Thank you for uh, clarifying that. I thought I had heard him, but um, I had not. Okay, so uh, moving on to public comment. Do we have any public attending uh, virtually? There is no public in person. No? Okay. Great. Well, then we'll move on to board comment. All right, Bill. Yeah, there's two great articles in this week's um, Herald, Randolph Herald, about uh, one article about um, what's happening at the Rochester Elementary School and okay. initiatives and change of staff and bios and all that. And another one about what was happening in the Stockbridge Central School. So it's, uh, spreading the news, the good news, uh, change in, in the team makeup. Um, which is, is really nice. Um, and so I just wanted to highlight that. That's, that's what we need to do is do it right and then and get the word out. That's, that's exciting. Were they, um, was it a letter that was sent in from um, No, it was two staff, articles or? that were, I think, generated by the... Martha the, Slater reaches uh, out to uh, meet with all the new folks. Oh, great. Yeah, it's there at the end of the table. What do you want to take a look at? All right, wonderful. I'm that's what you're trying to That's exactly what we were talking about. We're on, a, we're on board comment at this point. Um, Bill was just commenting on the wonderful articles in the uh, paper of uh, both of our school buildings. I just want to say I thought it was a very productive um, uh, retreat. Yeah. Great. On Saturday. I was very, very happy with it. Excellent. Well, that's, it was fun. It was good. Is there any other board comment? We made an adjustment to form okay. Be well, just in time, we can move on to the superintendent's report as he just walked through the door <laughs> <laughs> with his haircut and everything. Yeah, I did get a haircut. Yeah, nice. Yeah, sorry for running late tonight. Everyone's got packets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of extra ones, too. Um, so uh, you have my report in hand. Um, you know, I would say that we're, I want to emphasize we're finishing up academic testing uh, for the fall. Teachers are going to be meeting with principals uh, and then some central office folks to continue to analyze that data to make informed decisions, both uh, for universal instruction, but also for interventions, goal setting, things of that nature. Um, I'm excited to share that data with you. You'll get that full data report at the full board for the SU uh, later this month, and then at uh, your local district board in November. 
Uh, the AOE still um, hasn't provided us permission to release any individual student reports for the VT cap. Um, so stay tuned with that. We were hoping to be able to release that data back in the middle of September. Um, and then all of a sudden the agency um, put out a memo saying that they need, we needed to hold off. Um, so I don't know if that's about calibration or what's going on in that sense uh, around the uh, new Vermont Comprehensive Assessment Program. And what department is that? The Agency of Ed. Hey. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, I just want to remind folks, we do have our full board retreat. Everyone's invited. Uh, it'll be in South Royalton in the library next Tuesday. Uh, starting at 5.30. And I'll entertain any questions folks may have. And so I recall last... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bill. <laughs> I have a way of just birding out. Sorry about that. Um, as I recall the last uh, time we did this, uh, uh, SU retreat, uh, we were dined. Uh, is that uh, yeah, dinner a wonderful will be meal with, with great chocolate chips and oatmeal raisin cookies for dessert? <laughs> so is that still... Yep. Just letting people know. That's incentive uh, right there, right, Bill? If you're lacking any incentive to join. <laughs> Is there any other questions for the superintendent in regards to his report? Okay. Well, then let's move on to the principal's report. Um, so you have my report in front of you. We are up and moving. Um, I would say things to add to this. Um, we have completed all of our September emergency response drills, which includes uh, fire drill and an options-based um, practice drill. So those things are done, and I didn't put that in there, but what reminded me was the policy for tonight. Um, so we've done that. We've also had several um, joint opportunities where preschools got together and went apple picking together and then our fourth fifth and sixth graders have been together at the Tunbridge Fair unfortunately snorkeling was postponed due to rain and we're still trying to work on a reschedule for that group um, but yeah I'll entertain any questions Come out, up and going. Bill. yeah I've uh, been attending school meeting board meetings up here since I moved in 2001 and um, I read your principal's report, and I'm not one, not two, not three, but four teams that have been developed in our site. Mm -hmm. A leadership team, a targeted support team, a universal support team, intensive support team. We're, we're practicing what we're preaching, which is to do it, we've got to do it together, and we've got to do it at all levels at every school um, and make everybody responsible for that and caring about that. So I just wanted to highlight that to the board. If, to me, that is something that we haven't seen here in prior administrations. Um, they, I remember them highlighting field trips, which make me feel good. Um, mm -hmm. And it, they're important. I don't mean to make right. light of that. But if we're talking about moving our kids socially, emotionally, or academically forward, um, boy, we've got to be able to know what's going on, share that information, analyze it at, at, at the cohort level as well as individuals. And here's an example of how we're doing it in our set. And Jamie, I assume this is what we're doing throughout the SU. Yep. Um, and it gives me great confidence that uh, the gains that we're making um, as they've been measured, and I don't see all the measures and everything else, I, uh, are going to be sustained and strengthened going going forward. Um, so I just wanted to uh, mention that. And going back, I, if it's all right with the, the chair, um, Jamie mentioned it's his report, uh, two things. One is a, um, a video by, uh, about alternative pathways that you can access on the SU board, and it's like three minutes or six minutes. Really, really great stuff. Um, and it really makes you think, wow. Wow, wow, wow. We're using the media, and they were telling our story, and it was very, very, um, very effective. And so I appreciate that. And the other one is that we've got a curriculum now that we have on the website. Uh, every course, uh, the main course is K through 12. Mm -hmm. I, 
that's never, as far as I know, ever happened before. So if you've got a third grader, you want to know what are, what these key things are that they're going to be doing and, and we're going to be pushing to achieve, you go to the third grade or the fourth grade or K and the 12. And so I, uh, that's a lot of material there, but for those of us that uh, are in a learning mo mode all the time, we need to be, it's a good source of information about what's happening on the, on, in the classroom. Very so, nice. Um, that was pretty impressive. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's great. I think that's something we have spoke about before. Mm -hmm. Wondering what what yeah. are the classes doing, and so that's great that that resource is out there for everybody to look at. That's great. Yes, great report. It was three pages. Yeah, and then I'll just Hashtag. add that tomorrow we get our first delivery of pellets tomorrow afternoon, um, oh, and they will be okay. here to. Are we talking about rabbits? No, we're talking about uh, Wood pellets, pellets for the boiler. For the boiler. Oh. Uh, because the systems are balanced, which I guess means they work efficiently, and both I've learned a lot of terms. Nice. Um, so we will be able to manually test the wood pellet boiler tomorrow afternoon. Wonderful. It's a little warm, but. That's okay. We want to do it before it's too cold. <laughs> exactly. And, and then the controls will be in place for it to go automatically here in the next two weeks. Excellent. That is, that's great. <coughs> uh, is there any other questions for the principal on her report? Uh, just will we be able to do go automatic on on the propane right now, or we have to wait for the controls? Yeah, not automatic, but we can use the manual um, okay. option from the front. Okay. Does that answer the question? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. okay. Like the we do have heat. We do have heat. <laughs> it's up and going. Yeah. Can be. Excellent. Well, thank you for your report. Uh, Tara, business manager's report. So you all have my report. I'll answer any questions you have. Only update I have that isn't in the report is that the auditors will be in our office next week to complete the final stages of physical audit. Go ahead, Bill. I'm, I had a question for you, but I didn't write it down, so. <laughs> this will give you a chance. I get great... A satisfaction of looking at Tara when she mentions the auditors are coming. And look at how relaxed she is. She's <laughs> smiling. It's like, well, you know, it's you know, it's like going down and, and getting a six pack of whatever your favorite whatever it is. So uh, that gives me great confidence. We all have great confidence in um, your team and what you've been doing financially and that's one thing we don't have to worry about are the numbers right. We have to figure out what's the best use of the resources and what we're doing. So Thank you for that. Thank you. Is there any other questions? For, I'm, I don't remember. You know how to, I, you know how to get me. Mike I know how to get you. When I first read through it, I had a question, but I <laughs> didn't have the paper to write down. So I, I know where you live. <laughs> I know where you work. <laughs> you probably live there, actually, at this point. So, okay. Is there, if there's no further questions for Tara, then let's move on to uh, policy committee update. Uh, just an uh, update that the policy committee met, and uh, we've created a working document. Um, and Patrick, you should have received an updated version of that today. Thank you, Ray, for helping me with the links um, and the spreadsheet. So we're going to be prioritizing a review of policies uh, based on, like, a tiered system. First being uh, reviewing any policy that we feel like as an admin team needs attention that's just not working for us. Then we'll review policy in regards to what are required and have been updated by the VSBA um, since our last adoption. Um, and then the third tier will be those that we have in place that are recommended and um, may have been revised since. Um, we're pretty much in good place around all the requires and the uh, recommended in place. So this is really about reviewing what we have in place and make sure it's working for us. So you're probably going to see some policies coming in front of you that we already have that are going to have suggested revisions in them over the next uh, year and a half or so. Great. I know we had talked about wanting to get into reading and more familiar with our policies, um, and I think this is probably a way that we mm -hmm. – We'll be doing that actually, and on a, on an SU level. So, great. Okay. Uh, if there is there any questions for the policy committee? 
Okay, well then let's move on to policy adoption. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is A20, Board Civility and Code of Ethics Policy. And this was adopted by the full board. All three of these were adopted by the full board last Tuesday. Okay. Um, is there any um, discussion on this first policy? If not, I take a motion to adopt. Also move Second. adoption of the Code of Ethics. And I would like to say this is important. We, this board, I mean, as we've talked about it, under your leadership at and, and Ethan at our retreat. Um, I think it's just we're built in to be civil with one another. Um, our role is also to be civil with anybody who wants to talk about, they're interested in what we're doing and what they care about. And um, this puts it in writing so that, oh no, I wasn't talking about, I wasn't representing. I happen to think that now that I'm on a school board, even though I'm not wearing my orange hat or black hat, um, I'm a representative of the board, so if somebody gets me talking about educational policy, I've got to remember that I represent and how I'm supposed to conduct myself. And so this makes it very clear, um, and I think it's very helpful. When we stumble that way, it just hurts. It's like it's an unforced error. Yeah. Uh, Billy Buckner uh, fumbling that ground ball. and. I want to not even talk about that. But um, <laughs> so anyway, I, I think this is great. Thank you. Great. There's a motion and a second on the floor. Um, there's been discussion. Is there any further discussion? Um, all in favor of adopting the board member civility and code of ethics policy A20, say aye. 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 All right. So moved. Okay. Next, we're going to look at F. 32 fire and emergency preparedness drills policy 34, 34. yeah <laughs> probably should not be working with numbers huh <laughs> we have time. i know um i uh we've seen this before our board um had some suggestions and i i really like the way the policy committee has taken ours pro and probably other board suggestions and i I do actually like, really like the way this policy is is um, read and and uh, the approach that it takes. Um, so I look for a motion to accept fire and emergency preparedness drills and policy. So moved. Second. Robert moves it. Bill seconds it. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 So moved. All right, let's move on to F35, Access Control and Visitor Management Policy. Okay, um, access control, that's access to our school site. Is that, mm -hmm. that's the access, con the control? Okay. Is there any discussion on this policy? Look for a motion to adopt it then. So move. Bill, second. Bill moves, Robert seconds. Is there any further discussion? Um, yes. Just, I mean, this deals primarily with building access. But I, I guess where I see that uh, with regard to, you know, grounds access, it's not that we're controlling it, but, uh, you know, we, I'm not sure where we have policy that governs when people come on, on site and what they're allowed to do. And that we have a building thing. use policy, which does cover the access of our grounds. Okay. So that utilizing includes... those. Um, okay. You revise it there. The policy committee is looking at that. Well, it'll be part of what we'll look at, but we currently have one that is about accessing our grounds. 
Because as most schools, there is public, I mean, public uses our playground and, and yes. such. So. Right. And that's not, not a problem generally, but what happens when things go wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. And that is one that needs some looking at because, um, you know, we want to be community schools, and there's actually pieces of that policy that I think, think have created some problems around access. Um, mm -hmm. So that is one that I think at the admin level we're going to ask that the mm -hmm. board we look at. Okay. And um, you, you said facility use has its own policy, so facility use being um, a basketball game would have its own set of policies that wouldn't really go under this policy. Correct. Okay. Great. All right. Is there any further discussion? All right. All in favor of adopting uh, F35 access control and visitor management policy, say aye. 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 <laughs> All right. So moved. Okay. The policies have been, those three policies have been adopted. Nice growing policy committee. Yes. Very good. All right. Well, let's move on to draft one of the student support budget. So Lindy can jump in, or Tara. I mean, so um, just like we, we have over the last several years, we start um, by looking at student support. These are the big catch areas in regards to um, personnel uh, in regards to student support. So it, it's essentially your administration, your interventionist, um, your student support folks like guidance, nurse, uh, folks that support our teachers via paraeducators, regular ed, it's not special ed, uh, your substitutes. And then we also do have a school-based clinician that has been supporting the school via Claire Martin mm -hmm. as a contracted service uh, that your students have been accessing for therapeutic supports. Uh, that's something we're looking to move into the general budget if we can. We've been leveraging um, ESSER to help support that service. Uh, long as long uh, as well as some other type of grant funding that we were able to pull in at the SU level. Um, this is draft one. So what you're really seeing here is everything. Do know that there could be, as we are going through the budget process, that is an area that we might look to offset the additional forty thousand if we needed to. Okay. Um, but that level of support and service, uh, it's clear that it's important for us to continue. Yes. Um, so the rest of for, and I'm mostly, Cynthia, this is your first go at this process. We break it down by student support. We talk about that. Uh, we look for the board to give us a, kind of a, their thoughts around it. You'll get all the faculty and staff next month, including this, as part of draft two for student support. Okay. Um, we take feedback then. December, you get the full budget with all expenses and budget mm -hmm. lines in. Mm -hmm. We look for feedback there. We try to get you like a pretty solid draft in January uh, with the idea that sometimes we'll do a special meeting in January or you guys can actually adopt in February because you're later in the game. Right. Um, so it probably is you, it's typically vote. in February when you yeah. guys approve your budget. Our, our uh, school meeting for school budget meeting is in May mm -hmm. and most other towns do it on town meeting in March. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's usually a rush more, uh, we have a little more leeway and we can take a little mm -hmm. bit more time in the, in the early winter months, so. Okay. So we start with personnel the first couple months because that's the biggest, you know, biggest right. chunk. Mm -hmm. uh, other than tuition and, and the general intuition we don't have really any control over, right? Around mm -hmm. what can select. Right. Um, but we start to dial that in for you in December. January, Tara mm -hmm. tends to have the real um, announced tuition numbers 50, yep. that we are able to use um, and so really we sh try to shoot for February adoption so we got a little time but we try to start here mm -hmm. um, and then Lindy I think it would be helpful so Tara has uh, these figures you're seeing account for um, negotiated raises through your collective bargaining agreement um, and then Tara can talk to you about what she's using for insurance uh, numbers right now uh, for projections and then Lindy, you know, Lindy is projecting, uh, looking for an additional 0.2 FTE in reading intervention. Mm -hmm. um, and then also looking to add another para. So, Lindy, could you just talk a little bit about that? Yep. So, um, 
two things that I'll say is this is probably a little closer in terms of intervention to what we're actually providing. So currently that position, um, she also does library as well, but she's spending majority of her time on literacy intervention. So it, it makes more sense that we're supporting that in the right way instead of trying to shortchange that and that we're using best practice that those kiddos are getting the support that they need. So you can um, see an increase with free, in library. Yep, in with frequency. Um, and then in regular ed para, um, this kind of supports the, um, the K-1 or just a cohort of larger students that just require that additional support, not necessarily um, academically or behavioral, but just because we're five and six and we're all together and there's about 20 of us and that helps support uh, the classroom teacher with routines and expectations and really allows them to not miss a beat. And so seems... it was K-1 and five, six? Uh, no, sorry, they're five and six year olds. Oh, okay. <laughs> I five like, and six year olds. No. Yes. Okay. Um, Angels. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Um, so that would be the biggest one. And then I'll just speak to the school based clinician. That is someone who has a full caseload within both of our um, buildings. It's a shared staff member. But uh, So is it, it, it's currently being administered by Claire Martin? And it would right. Remain. She's in a. Yeah, it's a contracted service. It's a contracted, contracted service, service through Claire yeah. Martin, but this um, it was being funded with different money That's before, so we need to bring no it local funding. Yeah. back into local funding. Okay, yeah. okay. So we get a full time employee for that forty thousand dollar figure. Yeah. Which okay. Is pretty great through that contracted cheaper. service. Okay. Yeah, and this is we've had this because this person, this position currently, this is not something new. No, so yeah. she's new to the general fund. But right. Right. She's been here for three years. We added school-based <coughs> clinicians across our districts um, two years ago. Mm -hmm. We've been lucky that the school-based clinician we have at Rochester Stockbridge has been here the whole time. We've mm -hmm. had a trouble, well, by we, our partnership with Claire Martin has had real trouble filling these positions in some of our districts. I see. Mm -hmm. Like um, in um, Sharon and Stratford, we were never able to fill it, and same at First Branch, we haven't been able to fill it. So we're very lucky. They handle, my impression is they handle kids that really have, are struggling, social, emotional. Um, and to the extent that we don't handle that, it's the, the kids continue to, to struggle, um, mm -hmm. uh, the parents, and then it can swing right back into the classroom and it can impact everybody. So is, am I got that right about this importance of this role? Yeah, I mean, and it, what it does is it allows us to provide that therapeutic intervention in the school mm -hmm. and for our families not to have to try to figure out how to connect with a, a you know, a therapist, um, per se, like having to go to Randolph or having to drive over to Middlebury, mm -hmm. um, that they're able to get that service right here in the building. So the likelihood of action, positive action, sooner or quicker action, is reinforced if we have it right here, then uh, parents trying to find and chase and do that. Um, makes sense to me. Yes, Robert. And it's also more timely is the, yes. the most important yeah. thing. Uh, just trying to understand these figures, we have reductions um, between 24 and 25, um, but they're reductions in the proposed amount, but no change in FTE. Correct. So on the salary and benefits, we last year, um, based on the information that we had been given during our meetings with Visbit, which is our insurance provider, we had projected um, substantial increases in workers' compensation based on claim rates, medical expenses. So some of this, um, the rates didn't go as high as they projected, so I was able to bring them back down in this budget. Good. And then also, um, in your regular ed paras, we had budgeted uh, primarily for a family health insurance plan, and that wasn't utilized. So when I build your budgets, I'm building your budgets based on the staff you have in your buildings today. Mm -hmm. So I pulled down the master salary 
spreadsheet for all of our buildings, and that's what I use to build the budgets. As far as health insurance, dental insurance, I build in increases based on information that we are given. We don't get those rates usually until the end of October. So right now in the budgets, we're using a 13% increase on health insurance, and that's based on a 12.7% was the actual increase last year. So there may be an adjustment once I see them, and a 5% increase on the dental insurance. So that's also what's currently built in here. So again, once I get those rates, these numbers on your first draft will be adjusted to okay. represent the actual rates that are being filed with the state of Vermont Department of Insurance. And just so the board knows, just a reminder, um, if we, let's say we don't know who's gonna work for us, we yep. always go into it budgeting a family plan. Yep. Okay. Because right now, yeah, a family nice. plan yeah. is $28,000. Hmm. So if we didn't budget for a family plan yeah. and you had someone come in, like right there, that's right. a substantial amount of money that's not budgeted for, yeah. so we always use that as our placeholder. Great. Okay. So thoughts, I mean, you'll get all your faculty next month, and that will give you a much better sense of where we're looking at just mm -hmm. based on those increases around our bottom lines. I mean, we have the rest of the pieces. But. Okay. I mean, considering uh, we're looking at trying to add the school-based clinician currently right now, Anna Para, I was really excited when Tara provided us this first draft because mm. I was that I was not that. as optimistic Think about I was gonna... being at that point right, right now. So I'm feeling, we'll see what the rest of it looks like, but I'm feeling okay. No, it looks pretty good. Um, just on that question of the decreases in... Um, the, specifically the regular ed para, we're trying, we're going to increase the FTE, but yet we are st still down, and that really is just because of that workman's comp. And that was the health yeah, insurance. insurance. There and was, the health it insurance. was budgeted okay. for a family plan, but the person who actually we hired for that role didn't take the family plan, so yeah, it gives you a little bit of leeway in the 25 yeah. budget. Right. Pending so that person stays employed and doesn't change your health insurance. <laughs> wow, that's amazing how how much it can swing them. Yeah. Like that's that's right. a whole that's a whole. Position. It is. Right. It's a whole position. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, the salary for a, a support staff is almost the same. I mean, when you look at the whole package, where you know you're pushing almost sixty thousand, yep. but the health insurance is almost half of that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, is there more questions on this first draft of the budget? Um, I I agree with what I'm seeing. I, I think that this is the right way to go. These are um, this is increases that we need for para, and definitely having the um, the interventionist in school, the contracted position there. I think um, I think it's all very important. Um, and liter literacy intervention, you know, that's what we're trying to do is get them right. get it, get it into the intervention as quick as we can, and having the um, bodies there to be able to to facilitate that so uh, does anybody else have any more comments or direction that we want to give our administration in regards to what we've been provided today great I'm gonna leave you all to get to Thanks, okay thank you very much I did bring my computer so I'll jump on okay uh, so now we're gonna move on to 7-2 follow up on the uh, board retreat. Um, I thought it was a great retreat. Uh, I do feel like we kind of left some stuff hanging at the end, but we did talk about having a, um, a follow-up uh, retreat in, say, January. So I uh, didn't get out to everybody to bring their calendars to this meeting, but if we can definitely by next meeting uh, bring our calendars to, or maybe even uh, throughout the month of October, I can send out an email of a save so we can try to meet again to do a another a retreat to, you know, kind of finish up some of the board goals that we were talking about. Um, I do have a list of kind of action items, you know, yeah, some I things, some specific yeah. stuff. Um, so. Yeah, I was going to. Um, excuse me. Go ahead. I, yes. didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, I was looking at you. Go ahead, Val. The. Um, we talked about our protocols, and I think we're 
pretty set on that we've got good protocols and I'll come back with a score sheet of how we self-evaluated ourselves. Um, but it seems to me it'd be timely to um, have that on a, like the November agenda and yeah. just put Absolutely. those vote to thing that we've, those protocols and we can change anything we want, but um, uh, going forward. And we also have governance principles, which are the overriding things there. So that was one thing I thought we could do sooner. And if we're going to have FY24 goals, I think we need to do those sooner than later. And if the, the, the agenda in November can do it, I think my sense is a lot of the goals we had for this year, concluding in June, uh, would carry forward. But we also need to see if there's any new initiatives um, that we need to attend to for the for this academic year. And so, um, if you like, I can draft something up on that. But I would and get it out. I, I think we need to say, yeah, we're together on where we want to head. And again. We did a lot of this fresh work. We had a committee last time mm -hmm. with Justine and Ethan and myself, and then we spent a lot of time. This time, I think it can be more straightforward, but I think we need to make sure what are the things the next few months and we need to pay attention to, and do we want to formalize that in a goal or not? So that would be one of my um, suggestions. And then the third thing is I've ordered books, and if I had done it right, I would have uh, had each one sent to the individual <laughs> addresses. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then I realized I don't have your addresses, so they're all sent to me. Some will be used, so there'll be some oh, good. You know, highlighting and That's everything good. else. I've got one for the superintendent that's especially highlighted, so he can just <laughs> skim through and read this in, in an hour. But um, if I can get these in hand and get them to you, and I'll probably email you and just say, what's your address? And then I won't publicize your address, but if um, if you let me know, I'll, I'll try to drop them off um, soon. And there's a, 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 a good starting chapter is, you know, why school boards are so important. And um, you think, oh, well, you know, we walk on water. No, but there's been a lot of work on that. And so it's a great way to kind of reinforce the importance of our role. And then that obviously talks about being effective in that role. So I'm going to recommend through the chair that if I get it to you all in time for the, the first chapter, uh, we have that as a possible agenda item in okay. November. The final thing was we were talking about the, uh, a possible um, review of looking back uh, since the, we've been together now five years at whether uh, it would be timely now to look look back and how, how we've done and, and po the possibility of, of community and parent input on that. And so I don't know how we left that and how you left that, but that's something that's um, and that will take time. I, I commit myself to kind of recommend kind of a framework for that, but uh, you need to give us the guidance on when and how you want to do that. Uh, yeah, we had talked road. about. Um, I took a picture. Sorry. Yeah. Was, no, no, that's okay. Um, we yes, and in our meeting, we uh, in our <coughs> retreat, we had talked about um, you know surveys, uh, student survey, parent survey, community survey, and I've. Uh, we did write down that that Bill was going to put together a, a framework. Okay. So I. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I'm just. Um, if you're still uh, willing, it, it, we did write it down. <laughs> it was taken. It'll be a dr it'll be a draft. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, we, I think also we do need to schedule sometime in the future, uh, as it's required by the merger agreement that we do a five-year review right this is the pre this is the right. beginning parts of, of right. but then use that language but do we have a target date that we want to do that by I'll, I'll try to crack something out okay um, and I do have some notes um, you know and I think pertaining to the goals and I, I do think that's I'm I'm happy for Bill to just to, to look at the uh, what we discussed uh, and just try to um, yeah. kind of I'll, I'll rough it up. I'll send it, it up to you. Okay. You give me, and then uh, we'll have something to 
for the whole board. Yeah, and, and including, I, I think that one of our goals has to do with, um, and we discussed this, is that the this reading the, together is is a valuable yeah. tool, and I think that that's, I think that I think that's a goal. I really do. I think that's a goal for us to to continue to educate ourselves and and to um, participate in this. Yeah, and Amy, I just want to say thank you for leading us in that retreat. It was a very productive <laughs> retreat, and. Um, Thank you. You know, it's like we're somewhat like herding cats, but I think sometimes we're a little better than that. But um, nothing wrong with cats. So, no. Um, but it takes somebody to take the lead and organize and keep us moving. So thank you. Uh, well, I, I definitely appreciate that because you, um, you're always worried that you want everybody to have a full say, but you also want to keep the train moving <laughs> forward. So. You have a good way of doing right. it, kid. Okay, well, thank you. I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, does anybody have any other follow-ups? from the retreat that they would like to bring up at this time. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, so 7-3, we're going to discuss uh, changing our regular meeting time uh, from 5.30 to 6 o'clock um, per a, a suggestion by one of the board members. Um, I do love the 5.30 time because it gets it out earlier, but um, 6 o'clock is just is fine and if it's going to save a world of, of whatever of uh you know i i get it so um it i would um i would see six o'clock is an appropriate time mm -hmm. if, if that will work with administration with the oh, other responsibilities they have on the same I think night partnered up with the right board to be able to do it okay like that close good all right well i'll entertain a motion to well, I thought that was, goes under action items. Sure, we can wait till action items. That's fine. All right, so then let's move on to celebration of learning to be yeah. announced. So I am going to turn it over to Miss Donna. She's here tonight to talk about at the end of the year after our June meeting because we meet Sorry, so sorry. early in June. Mm -hmm. I got this the um, yeah. fifth and sixth <laughs> graders in Rochester and Stockbridge participated in a United Book Club. Um, together on the most costly journey, which is um, oh. stories of migrant farm workers throughout Vermont, and it's done at the Vermont Cartooning School. They work together. Um, <coughs> and so, Ms. Donna's got a little presentation, and uh, Ms. Donna, you tell me when, and I'll bring out the other things. Sure, you can turn up the s slideshow, that'd be great. I believe I shared that. So as Lindy said, this was um, the Vermont Humanities Council, um, Vermont Reads Book of the Year. And when we were designing what this book club would look like last year, we um, are very fortunate to have Dana Decker as our equity coordinator in the SU, and she wanted to be a part of the book club as well. So we settled on this book, which has 19 different stories in them, and we felt that 15 were appropriate for fifth and sixth graders. And so we came together and it all happened in June <laughs> because of the rest of the year got super busy. Um, but it ended up being a really beautiful thing because we were able to meet, the students were able to meet twice a week at Stockbridge and then at Rochester. And then we had a um, farm tour field trip. So that connected back to connected back to the book and thinking and thinking about migrant workers and and their journey to get here and the work that they do. So I don't think I have the capability to turn. Great. So we met twice in Stockbridge. We met as a big group and then um, adults had shared reading. Some feedback we got immediately from the students is they want to be able to do the reading, which we, will be the plan this year. But this was the stories told um, in the form of a graphic text. So there were different New England cartoonists who had drawn up the stories after meeting with different migrant workers. A big part of the experience we wanted students to get was the idea of how other people live and also what people are, are willing to do for work and for their family on behalf of their family as well. So we came together, we shared some of the stories together and had discussions and did a lot of brainstorming. And then each time we met, uh, students also had a chance to work on a project. So the first day was after reading four stories, they came up with their own multimedia project based on 
the, their takeaways from that. And you can flip again to the next slide. So this is them working on, and this is in Stockbridge, working on some different projects. And we wanted something to happen that first day, and we were super impressed by what students had come up with. And then on the subsequent three days of meeting together to read, um, students chose which project they wanted to work on. So we had brainstormed possible projects, and they included murals, a podcast, slideshow and also students creating their own comics so they had a choice of which they wanted to do but they needed to commit for the three days with their group to see that project through this is them with their original first day projects so some of the feedback that we had gotten from students is they had said things like, I never really thought about how other people lived before, or I didn't really understand why people left their homes in the first place, um, or even understand the danger that they had in coming to America. You can keep flipping, great. This is students working on their mural and they decided as a group that they would, one group was gonna work on what it looked like in Mexico. Another group was gonna look, create a mural based on the journey. And the last mural was based on arriving in Vermont. We also made time each day. We created, we came up with some cooperative games for them to play, but then they had a time just to have recess and play together and also have lunch together and snack. <laughs> These are some pictures from when we went on the farm tour. It was great to be able to go to Rochester and go to Liberty Hill Farm, and then to be in Stockbridge and go to Birdsong Farm on Music Mountain. When we were at um, one of the farms, we students had a chance to meet some migrant workers as well, and also the farmer. And a, a big part of the student feedback was how lovely the relationship was between the workers and the farmer and a lot of um, respect and care um, that was given. So it was really great to have them notice that on their own. So this is just some of the things that we had, the themes that students identified, some of the discussions that we had, which were pretty powerful. Um, and that was in the book that in itself was a big message that came across that kind of to withstand some of the hardships we can experience in life, finding your passion and making time for those constructive things is really important. Um, having a strong work ethic will take you very far um, and how important communication was. And of course, that was a big message in this with there being a language barrier, but how people still managed to be able to communicate. So we were very happy <laughs> with the outcome of this project. I think students were really thrilled too. And um, I don't think anyone was opposed to getting together initially, but I think they were really overjoyed with having this larger group of students to be able to think and work and read with and play. Those are some of the comics that students created. And the books, by the way, we had uh, written a grant to the Vermont Humanities Council, so we were able to get the books for free, which was great. And that is all of them. <laughs> Yeah, and I think Lindy has some of the murals still. <laughs> so last year's book club in June was so successful. I think we have plans to do maybe two this maybe year. Two this year. <laughs> so this was um, full three full days. This was three partial days for um like from like nine to one wow okay roughly nice maybe twelve thirty. yep so there's the welcome to vermont i'm not sure if anybody's saying anything but it's oh. muted in case someone is saying anything to me sorry 
Sorry. Oh. I'm over here talking about murals, Miss Donna. Uh, so we had a welcome to Vermont. We had um, me, uh, a group that did Mexico, right, before they left. Right. Adios in a sad face. What an incredible, just that, the whole experience and what the kids got out of it. Um, it's just really incredible and they did a great job. yeah, um, it just really warms, really warms my heart to, to hear that type of feedback that and critical thinking that they came up with. Um, just a wonderful project. I'm glad to hear that um, this idea is going to move forward. They were excited about yes. it. And I think I'll share, Miss Donna, that the podcast, if we can, we'll find a way to maybe email that to you guys to listen to. They interviewed, the group that did the podcast interviewed all their classmates and uh, naturally came up with that they were like the RSUD book club, 5-6 book club, and that they liked having different opinions together. And those are some of the themes that came out right. together. So I think it was pretty powerful for cohorts of kids who are used to being with each other since elementary school. Mm -hmm. And then and then we're doing that. So yes, and I think the podcast group had also wanted students and teachers alike, because they interviewed teachers too, to kind of put yourself in that position and how might you react? You know, how might you feel if you had to travel that far from home or um, that you can't communicate with a place where you might want to work. So it was great that the podcast group came up with their own ideas of what they wanted to know more about and wanted their classmates' opinions and stuff. But it was pretty neat. We were, we were quite delighted. We had an idea, of course, of how it would all go, but you don't really know until you put it in, in students' hands and where they might take it. So we were very pleased. Excellent. I'm very pleased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Miss Donna. Yes, thank you so much. That's the best the best part of our meeting right there. Our <laughs> celebrations of learning. Um, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, over 50 years ago, I was out in California as a, in the war on poverty as a VISTA volunteer, and uh, part of our was working with migrant farm workers, um, and we've come a long way. Uh, you're talking about stoop labor, extreme heat, poor, uh, pesticides, lousy housing and food. Uh, no, um, the whole fight was to unionize the farm workers so that they have some benefits and that sort of thing. And this marched on Sacramento and that sort of thing. We've come a long way, Caesar Chaffel is. Um, Vermont's doing it better. I think the country in 50 years has come a long, 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 long way. Um, but we can't forget how important it is to treat people properly and, and, and be aware that um, um, for the most part, they're not as privileged as we are, but we need their services. Uh, we need their labor. Um, and so to be able to have that in our elementary school, to tell that story in Vermont, um, I think is very heartening. Um, and I commend um, everybody who's involved in this project. Nice job, thank you. Thank you, okay. wonderful. Any uh, further comments or questions or on the celebration of learning? Not this bad. Great. Thank you, Donna. Yes, thank you so much. Welcome. My pleasure, truly. Okay, let's move on to 10 action items. 10-1, uh, floodproofing areas of concern specific to high school building to mitigate floodplain concerns through the use of capital reserve funds. <laughs> it's Sorry, it's a mouthful. <laughs> and I sent, a, I sent a proposed motion mm -hmm. to you, but I'm a suggest maybe we change the amount okay. of, of what, that we actually use the capital reserves of fire pending further um, thinking here. So let me just, so um, Robert and I have been joining the um, re-envisioning group for the high school. Um, 
And so we, we've been meeting on a fairly regular basis, about once a month. Um, and you know, I think in general, November 2, we could give the board a, a deeper update about all this work, because I think there's some really exciting momentum happening mm -hmm. in regards to leading up to um, the possible vote and then uh, sale of the high school. And so we're currently in the, in the process of finishing up our phase two um, Brownfield study. Uh, we'll get those results hopefully here in the next couple months. Um, that's in a really important step uh, to get that part finished. Um, and so what the other piece is, if you remember, we've been trying to work on is making certain we mitigated the floodplain concern so that upon the sale of the high school building that the town would then be able to tap into federal grant funding to help support that project. And one of the things that needs to happen in order for that to occur is the mitigation of the floodplain. Um, and so the last step to this mitigation um, appears to really be us. There, if you were to look out at the high school right now, you'll see that by the auditorium, there's a, a set of double doors and a single door that shoots out to the field here. Mm -hmm. That during Irene, there was some flooding that occurred. And so they, um, through working with um, Du Bois and King, um, one of the things that we can do to mitigate that is to install these like steel barriers on the doors. So what they do is, and this is all recognized as an appropriate mitigation um, in regards to uh, mitigating the floodplain. And so what they do is you instill these panels um, that you can then, if if we were to hear like this summer that there was flooding, there was a concern that was gonna happen, you literally go in and you slide in this steel barrier and it stops the water from being able to enter the building. Okay. Um, and this would then uh, hopefully be the last step for us in regards to being able to mitigate that floodplain concern. So compared to what it could have been originally as we were talking through, we were worrying about excavation and things, this is a really cost effective way to do it. Um, and so, you know, I'm here tonight to say to the board, I think it makes sense for us to take this action because that will take care of this floodplain concern as we move forward uh, with the town looking to as soon as, you know, essentially once this level two uh, greenfield study is completed, I have every indication brownfield. to believe, sorry, brownfield. Yeah, what did I just say? Green. Sorry. No. <laughs> Sorry. Study. Uh, completing that the town is going to be working with this Envision group uh, to move forward. Um, the other thing I, I would say is that that group that's been doing a lot of this work around re-envisioning is also looking at um, possibly becoming a nonprofit to help support the town with this next step. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of seriousness about this and significant steps uh, taken to address it. So. The cost of each one of these barriers is 5000 and then... We are also taking care of the door on the auditorium. Yes. To size these up. Yes, three doors. Three doors, right. Yeah. So the total cost in the parts, you know, the barriers would be $15,000. Um, and then we'll need to add some money to install them. Um, I and Tara do research on your capital improvement funds. Rochester itself does still have based, so when you sold the down the line daycare, there was 70,904. Uh, we used $57,020.93 for the alarm system. That leaves 13,888307 left in that reserve. I was thinking of considering that, recommending that we would use the rest of that. That's not, remember we created this new Rochester Stockbridge mm -hmm. reserve. This would finish out that reserve. And then the administration, me and Tara, Lindy, and I would look to use what you already have budgeted in your typical maintenance and improvement plan, uh, budget lines to find the rest for installation in that last couple thousand. You said 15,000 for the barriers? It, the barriers themselves are gonna yeah. cost 15. Lyle felt like we could get them installed for less than five, but five was a number I was using just because to be safe. So um, what you had sent me before was not to exceed 20000 is that Correct. still but the... That would still, um, that was me thinking that we recover all of it in capitals reserves, because remember, you have to give us explicit permission yes, okay. for the capital reserves. So I was going to suggest that we you would move to do this project 
and access the 13,883.07 in capital reserves to pay, you know, offset the mm -hmm. cost. Okay. Uh, then we'll find the rest of the money in the local budget, but that would, you know, a big chunk of this would come out of that Rochester fund um, and right. cover, you know, 80% of the, the project. Okay. Right. Uh, discussion? And then, does anyone else have any questions for me? Because I'm going to jump in with um, Jihad. No, uh, that's why we have need capital reserve funds. Good right. example. Mm -hmm. So you're good with Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, is there any d more discussion? Okay. Uh, then. I would like to make a motion to provide permission for the administration via the capital, the Rochester Capital Building Reserve Fund to install the floodgates in the areas of concern at the high school with the cost not to exceed, to draw funds from the Rochester Capital Improvements Fund in the amount of $13,883.07. So moved. Second. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Um, just, discussion? Just, yeah, just what do you think? You're our man. <laughs> well, it's great. I mean, there were other proposals that were more expensive and automatic and things like that, but this was the most cost effective. And, you know, the one on that's basically what the area underneath the, um, the music room, uh, I mean, that's really isn't used much. So, I mean, th we can just leave them and installed most of the time and just open it up if we have to store something there. It used to be used for the tractor. Okay. Yeah. So the only one would the be where it's not in there? No, oh, it's still there. All right, so the tractor's still there. Right. So. We can pull that out, though. <laughs> yeah. Well. And then the other so would be the, the, the auditorium, oh, putting that in and out. All right, is there any more discussion? Uh, the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> All right, so moved. Okay. Um, is there any, oh, uh, yeah. 10 2. Um, I would like to make a motion that we change our regular scheduled meeting time from 5.30 the first Monday of the month to 6 o'clock the first Monday of the month, alternating campuses as we have been. I can make that motion. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded <laughs> by Robert and seconded by Bill. Is there any discussion? Great. Right. All, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, so so moved. <laughs> okay, uh, now we'll move on to new hires for resignations. I think we're good. <laughs> okay, are we oh, still good. looking for? We're 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 settled. Right, unless a point two world language person comes so out of the okay. woodwork, we are we are staffed. Okay, so we're always we're, we're still looking for language, but That's awesome. um, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well then let's move on to 12, public comment. Do we have any public on, um, no? Okay. Uh, I just would like to men mention that uh, we had discussed um, uh, doing some temperature monitoring in the, the high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I have just installed for my own house uh, what I think is a good candidate uh, okay. system, and I'm trying it out while I go to California, <laughs> so. Okay. But and it's, pardon me? How long? Oh, in California? Yeah. Yeah, uh, two weeks about. Nice. Have you got permission of the chair? <laughs> <laughs> we had a party yesterday. <laughs> so you'll be back by the time of our next meeting. That's, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> just, just, just checking out. Um, so are you in touch with, uh, uh, is it Lindy that you're talking to about these temperature monitors? Lyle, who? Yeah, I, I think uh, it was recommended by um, And uh, he had emailed, mm -hmm. but I also 
in looking for something for myself, came up with this other, and I, I'm trying it out. Okay. See how easy it is. When I get have have it I tested, idea. I will get back. And okay. It's actually cool. You know, it is accessible from anywhere, um, rather than from wi through the Wi-Fi system. So. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is if we use power, the generator doesn't power that. Right. I don't know how that impacts all of that. That's good, good to right. be aware of. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not that tough. <laughs> okay. Well, all the individual monitors are battery powered. Okay. And then um, rechargeable battery powered. And then there's a hub which does need power, but we might come up with a um, right. with a battery backup for it. Okay. So we'll put something together. Okay. But it it means we can, and it'll alarm too. So. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I have to get back to and find out which areas we need to set it up. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll go through and figure out how many hubs we need, depending on what the the, the, the range. The hub talks to the Wi-Fi to the right. outside world, but it then uh, talks by either Zigbee or a different protocol to all the sensors. Okay. Well, I think that's beneficial. We want to secure this. Save, right. save this building as best possible mm -hmm. way. Keep it safe and secure. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Thank you. Sounds good to me. Thank you very much. Um, so, I actually didn't print out the second page after public comment. All right. So, um, our next meeting date is going to be Monday, November 6th at 6 o'clock at the Stockbridge campus. Um, for future agenda items, I already have um, the protocol uh, score sheet um, and quite possibly chapter one of book club. And I um, possibly goals. the goals will be able to um, board goals. Does anybody else have anything they want to bring up at this point for future agenda items? Um, and you can always email me or, or call me throughout the, the month. Um, we usually try to get uh, at least the week before, week and a half before, we try to finalize the agenda. So. Okay. Great. Well, if, there's, if that's it, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor? Yeah, yeah. Aye. 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 Have a good night. Thank you, Pat, for joining us. Oh, what a cutie. Will you introduce us?